This is the OnePlus 9R, a rebranded OnePlus 8T. Yes, it is 8T. It has the same camera as 8T, nearly the same processor as 8T with minor design changes. And this is the last time we'll talk about the 8T rebranding with that out of the window. We'll review the 9R as the OnePlus 9R and in 2021. So the question that has to be asked is, should you buy OnePlus 9R or consider other options like IQ7 at 40,000 or S20 FE at 45,000? Well, the short answer is, this is the best OnePlus phone to buy right now. For reasons? Well, this is Pratik, you're watching TechWiser, let's go. Before we get to the review, let's quickly see what you get in the box. There's this huge red box. You get a clear case, unlike the hard case that you get with OnePlus 9 Pro. Obviously, there's a price difference between the 9 Pro and 9R, so that's quite expected. You do get a scratch card on the phone, but if you are using it for long term, I would advise to have a good tempered glass and use it with the case. You also get a 65 watt fast charger and the same red cable. Now the difference here is the OnePlus 8T, OnePlus 9 and OnePlus 9 Pro have USB PD charger. So they can be used to fast charge other devices like MacBook or any other Android phone. This charger is not USB PD, so it cannot fast charge other devices. It will charge, but not fast charge. Now with that out, there are four things that I liked about the device. First off, the OnePlus 9R feels really well built. When you hold it in hand, it feels good and premium. Now on the display, it has Corning Gorilla Glass 5 protection. So for the unknown, Corning Gorilla Glass 5 is one of the best crash resistance you can get in smartphones as of now. On the back, you have glass with a matte finish, so no fingerprint. However, do use a case. It can still get scratched with coins and keys in your pocket. The frame is metal on the OnePlus 9R. It's funny that the 9R has a metal frame and the OnePlus 9 has a plastic frame and it's even 10,000 costly. Anyways, the second thing to notice is the NFC chip. OnePlus phones have always come with NFC chips and I like NFC due to two particular reasons. I have a Sony XM3 headphones which have NFC. So you can just tap your phone to power on the headphones and connect and then tap again to power off. Second, Google Play in India now supports debit card and credit card payments. So the NFC chip in OnePlus 9R can be used to just tap your phone and pay at the debit credit card machine. That's really good. Moving on, the second thing to like about this phone is the display. Now, all phones in this range like iQ7, Mi 11X Pro, S20 FE 5G come with a full HD 120Hz AMOLED display. So it has all that deeper blacks, high refresh rate, fast response. But there's one thing on this AMOLED display that you don't find in other phones. This is a HDR10 display and it is Netflix certified. So if you have a Netflix top tier account, you can watch HDR content on OnePlus 9R. I've seen a lot of other HDR10 AMOLED displays like S20 FE 5G and IQ7. None of them support HDR on Netflix. The OnePlus 9R does. And to complement this HDR, you have good stereo speakers. I would rate it as loud. You can use it mostly in most of the cases inside your house. If you're buying for Netflix media consumption, the sound on this is decent. Next up, the performance. Well, the OnePlus 9R comes with a Snapdragon 870. You get UFS 3.1 storage, which is the fastest you can get in 2021. You get two storage options, 8 GB RAM, 128 GB storage at 40,000 rupees and 12 GB RAM, 256 GB storage at 44,000 rupees. 12 GB is literally overkill for any phone right now. So stick to the 8 GB variant. Now, UFS 3.1 is the latest marketing gimmick and I haven't heard enough people talk about it. So, UFS 3.0, 3.1 or 2.2 makes a teeny tiny difference. I would be happy with anything above UFS 2.2. I'll try to drop links to an in-depth tutorial or explanation below. Do check that out. Now, with that out, the OnePlus 9R is fast. Like in day-to-day -day tasks like video calling, Instagram, multitasking between two apps, this thing flies. In gaming for COD, you can have the best graphics and maximum frame rate. 
it works like a flagship smooth gameplay i personally played a lot of genshin impact which is a really heavy game and the 9r can pull it off in higher settings something which is quite expected from a flagship processor like 870 at this price now finally the fourth thing is battery life the 9r has a 4500 mAh battery the battery is internally split into two small batteries of 2250 mAh and it might not sound huge but the phone easily lasts a day i'm getting 6 to 7 hours of constant screen on time and i've been using it at 120 hz refresh rate max out you can put it to 60 hz refresh rate if you want to save more battery however i would recommend leave it at 120 hz the phone automatically makes its judgment and drops back to 60 hz when an app doesn't support 120 hz for example when you open an app like youtube or netflix or a 60 hz game so the phone understands the app and if it's 60 hz it runs the display at 60 hz and with the battery not to forget this thing comes with a 65 watt charger it charges really fast like i have hardly charged my device for more than half an hour ever i just plug in and take it out but if you want to know it can charge from 0 to 100 in about 45 minutes which is really top level charging stuff compared to samsung and iphone now with that there are three things which i didn't like about the device first up straight up oxygen os i mean oxygen os is still great you get all those cool features like if you're in a game and you want to access the notification bar it automatically comes to the left or the right side depending on where you swipe on the screen that's really cool again if you receive a message while you're watching a youtube video you tap on it and it opens the message in a floating window you can reply to the message and tap and the video resumes again i didn't even have to move out of youtube to reply to the message and then the ui is now more one handed so if you go to settings menus everything comes right under your thumb but the main problem that i have with oxygen os is android updates one plus 70 previous flagship has received the android 11 update just now which is already pretty late we are on our way for the android 12 release in about 2 to 3 months oneplus has been the leader in terms of oxygen os updates and os but samsung has now taken over the position samsung promises over 3 years of android updates and 4 years of security updates on the other hand oneplus has no clarity on software update it's still maybe 2 years so to be clear with you you would be struggling with updates with this phone 2 years down the line if things go the same way they have been going on next is rebranding phones i know i know i said in the intro that i won't talk about the 8t but you have to how can you not talk about the 8t this is a rebranded 8t and to all those people saying well it's 3000 cheaper well they have to make it cheaper how will you sell the same phone with the same specs at the same price and this rebranding phones is a common trend in india but oneplus wasn't known for it it's sad to see oneplus doing the same exact thing and the final nail in the coffin is the cameras this thing comes with a 48 megapixel main camera 16 megapixel wide angle camera 5 megapixel macro camera and a 2 megapixel black and white camera like why why the effort this thing could have been a black dot no one would have ever noticed to give you a perspective i put in the samsung s20 fe 5g and iq7 in the camera samples now if you can spot the difference in the voice over sorry about that and you should watch the snl for for the reason now straight up i like the images out of s20 fe 5g the image has good contrast color and a bit of pop to it I also like the skin tone S20 FE produces. If you look at this particular image, the OnePlus 9R has this weird pinkish tint to the selfie. Same goes with this next selfie. The OnePlus 9R has this weird halo thing on the face due to strong strong HDR. For the wide angle cameras, the story is the same. The colors on the S20 FE 5G are better. For videos, here is the OIS stabilization on the 9R in 4K. and EIS plus OIS in 1080p and 4K as well. So, if I had to rate the cameras, 
the S20 FE 5G will be the first and top and OnePlus 9R and IQ7 would be far second. The human portraits and photos from the 9R are not flagship level. And all other things like Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.1, 4G plus carrier aggregation and all other sensors are present. Those are at flagship levels except wireless charging. So to sum it up, I stand by what I said. The OnePlus 9R is the best OnePlus phone to buy right now in 2021 if and only if you're looking for a OnePlus phone. Don't buy the OnePlus 9 because it's very compromised and the OnePlus 9 Pro is too costly. And if you want to step out of the whole OnePlus brand system, there are two options, iPhone 11 or Samsung S20 FE 5G. And in Android, the best option is S20 FE 5G with better cameras and most importantly, better software updates than OnePlus. Lastly, if you're a gamer who wants a really good gaming phone like top of the line performance in budget, get the iQOO 7. Save 10,000 rupees and the dual chip in iQOO 7 really helps in gaming. On that note, this is Pradeep. If you're watching TechWiser, like the video. See you pretty soon.